The following program is a special presentation brought to you by WXOW19. He meant so much to everybody that played for him. He was an absolute icon. He will always be the face of, of UW lacrosse football. He wanted to make sure that you learned about life, not just the game of football. The University of Wisconsin Lacrosse is the national champions of Division Three. everyone, I'm News 19 Sports Director Scott Emmerich and welcome to our special Roger Harry Football and Beyond. And I'm News 19's Dave Soley. Over the next half hour we'll take a look at the legendary coaching career of Roger Herring who passed away at his home two weeks ago at the age of 88. Coach Herring's tradition of success put him on ESPN's list of the top 150 college coaches of all time. The wins, the championships made him a football icon. But as his former players tell us, he was so much more than the numbers. News 19's Declan Levy explains. 31 years, 15 conference titles, three national championships, and hundreds of wins. When the man behind that success is gone, and it's numbers left in a stat book, what is left? Roger Herring was exactly what I needed at the time in my life. He was like a second father to a lot of those players. He had such an aura. The wins are important, but what Roger Herring meant to his players is extraordinary and will trickle down for generations. Coach led a life of contribution, and frankly, he poured that into all of us. As much as the national championships and the conference titles and the literally hundreds of wins are statistically what get reported a lot, part of his legacy will be those people who went on to be good fathers, loving husbands, uh, all of those contributions. Those are all part of Roger Herring's a legacy. We are all part of that right now. A member of the 1992 National Champs, Norris Thomas went to UW Lacrosse for an opportunity. He didn't know his biological father and thought excelling in football could help him find his dad. I always wish that I had dad standing waiting for me on the other side of that gate. So for me, you know, he filled in the gap when I didn't have a father, he was that father. He was the guy that when I came off the field, it was always great to see him standing there because I never had that. Herring's players were not just guys wearing numbers, they were family. And having that compassion while coaching was something his players respected. He was just always very positive. He always expected the best from you. And you know, even when you made mistakes, it was always kind of a teaching moment. It was never belittled, never negative about that stuff. He led by modeling what he expected and his entire coaching staff, they demanded respect, but they also gave respect. Knowing how to get the best out of his players, Herring had the attention of everyone around him. He created so many lasting memories for all of us, and he was such a humble and yet demanding man. That demand was eminent on the practice field and it translated on game day. Winning breeds winning, success breeds success. A lot of it was the preparation. We always went in very confident that we were gonna win because we were prepared. Herring's 261 wins is tied for fifth among all Division Three coaches in history. He was really intent about getting after it and playing to a certain level of intensity. He knew when to put the, you know, the pedal down and when to kind of unleash all of us on the, at the right time. There was a different level of intensity at practice when everyone on the field would be a star anywhere else. Competing against each other made Saturdays easy. You know, there was so much competition at that time. I mean, they were we were so deep. There was a lot of lot of players that could have started at any school and they all came to lacrosse. Come Saturday, it was a it was a pleasure to go, you know, play Stevens Point and Whitewater and River Falls and other uh, competitors because you, you were as prepared as you possibly could be. 100 yards is not enough to describe Coach Herring's significance. He allowed us to go on this journey with him, and I'm just so thankful. My life crossed with Roger Herring's. Thanks, Declan. UW Lacrosse finished first or second 25 times in conference play under Coach Herring. 
Eugene Williams' book called The Herring Era covers Herring's career through the words and pictures of those who knew him. One former player turned photographer and longtime friend of the coach spoke with News 19's Dustin Lukey. Before his name graced the stadium here at UW Lacrosse, before the honors and accolades, before the national championships and the winning ways, the Herring era began with the same sort of gusto for which the coach was always known. He would say, he said you guys aren't any good. They're going to not even run against you because you're not giving them any competition. Well, <laughs> you get some freshmen fired up like that. And it worked. <laughs> At least that's according to Larry Lebecki, one of the first players Roger Herring ever coached. Roger was a senior. He had used up his eligibility the year before. And so he served as a student coach uh, and when I was a freshman. It was interesting because he knew I had not played football in high school. So he helped me out. <laughs> as much as he could. Something must have worked as Lebecki went on to play linebacker through his student career at UWL starting his junior and senior years and something else clicked when life brought Lebecki and Herring together again. Lebecki hired as assistant chancellor in 1968, Herring becoming the head coach in 69. I got interested in photography and what I asked uh, the athletic department is, can I take photographs of the, and I, I did take photographs of the games, and I tried to provide eight by 10 photographs for the players and would try and would alternate them uh, from game to game. So I did that for about 40 years. Through his lens and friendship with Herring, Lebecki captured the highlights and changes of a program over four decades. The ups and downs, or mostly ups when talking about Herring's near 30-year tenure. But Lebecki notes one thing that didn't change with all the success, the man himself. It's interesting as I've observed Roger evolve as a coach over the years, uh, he was full of excitement and he had the philosophy of energizing the players and how important it is to develop the skill of working with other people and how much you care for other people. He kept emphasizing that year after year after year, but he loved to do that. A hallmark of the Herring era, carried on by the players and friends who continue to live his legacy. Among all the wins and losses and impressive seasons, there's one season that jumps out. 1992, and we'll tell you why when we return to Roger Herring, Football and Beyond. Welcome back to Roger Herring, Football and Beyond. Creating a family atmosphere in and around the team was a big part of Herring's legacy. But there was one season in which Herring needed his football family to come to his aid. Herring suffered a heart attack in the middle of the 1992 season and needed surgery. We caught up with Herring in October of that season while in recovery from that life-changing event where Herring talked about his football philosophy, his family, and his love of lacrosse. I've always felt that you have to work hard, you have to know what you're doing, and you got to be able to get along with the people that are around you. In other words, I'm going to make the evaluation on what I see in the field, not what I know about the person as far as his economic background or social background or religious background. I'm going to make my decisions on what I see. So fairness is what it's all about. Unlike many coaches, Herring doesn't necessarily measure success in terms of wins and losses. He looks instead at the growth of his players. There are no scholarships in NCAA Division III football, so Herring feels a responsibility to prepare his players for life after the game. A winning tradition has evolved at UWL, but heck, success would follow any business which applied Herring's criteria. I think that over the years, it's, it's been basically the same thing. You obviously have to know your craft and you have to deal with people. Well, a lot of, lot of letters and cards and messages obviously get well and so forth. It's just uh, incredible the amount of people that uh, have sent uh, mail and it's, it's just a great feeling uh, that, that there are some people that uh, 
enjoy meeting you, apparently. Herring is recuperating at his home a couple of blocks from campus. A former UWL player and now Hall of Fame coach surrounds himself with mementos highlighting his games and teams from around the country and around the world. To listen to this gifted man is to realize family values is not just a political year catch-all or a post-surgery enlightenment. It's Herring's secret to success. Uh, this is a, a big budget uh, film situation. <laughs> My wife, of course, was spent a, a dollar thirty-nine or something for the first picture of our five children together. And 25 years later, they came back and redid it for our 25th anniversary. People say, well, why, uh, why haven't you moved to maybe some uh, a, a bigger school or a division one or two and so forth? And I found that uh, you know, just living in La Crosse, the beauty of the area and the people are fantastic. Uh, you know. Uh, sometimes people always want to look for bigger and better, and that's not always best. And you still have the court Americana here, you know, where people are concerned about one another. I think that's really important. While he recovered, Herring chose defensive coordinator Roland Christensen to assume the head coaching duties, and the team kept winning. In fact, defensive backfield coach Barry Schockmel told us Herring began coming to practices and attending the games, but he did not assume head coaching duties. And I started thinking about this. I'm going, I'm, he's in the booth with us instead of being on the field. And I'm looking at him going, he's allowing Coach, uh, Coach Chris to handle this, and yet he could take all the credit, and he didn't. In, a, in the championship game, I'm sitting in the press box in Bradenton, Florida, and uh, I'm just watching, and I'm, you could see that he was really happy for Chris. Shock Mel says Coach Herring was sincere, unselfish, and humble, always providing credit to those who earned it. And current UWL Chancellor Joe Gao says he'll miss Herring's visits to the university. Gao didn't arrive at UW Lacrosse until 2007 after Herring's retirement, but the coach still had a presence. You could sort of set your watch by it. First, at Cartwright Center, then, the new student union. I will always uh, cherish those many years of just seeing uh, Roger there at the table having coffee. UWL Chancellor Joe Gao says it would happen about 11 o'clock most weekdays. Roger and friends would meet at the herring table. You, you, you sort of take things for granted, don't we? Um, and it's really hard to think I'll never see Roger in the union anymore. The circumstance Gao talked about is something for which Herring prepared his players. He wanted them to appreciate life. Practice wasn't all about football. Barry Schockmel coached the defensive backfield for Coach Herring. During one particular practice, he watched as Roger, more than once, spent time talking about that perspective. He looked around and all of a sudden he looks up, blows the whistle and stops practice. This happened twice. See the Eagles, to see the bluffs, and he said, there's a lot more to life than football. Such as family, a priority for Coach Herring, and something he wanted his players to respect and again, appreciate. Roger would say things like, you need to tell your family, your parents, that you love them. You never know when you won't have a chance, and it's not said often enough. Roger brought that philosophy into the community. Following home football games, for example, you would always find a large gathering at Roger's house. The chancellor would be invited. Townspeople would be invited. These gatherings at his house were pretty huge, and they were all positive no matter whether we won or lost. Coach Herring developed relationships, a key to his success on the field and away from it. He was involved with community members, and he talked about positive things of the community and positive things of the football team and positive things within town. And you just knew that this is the type of person you wanted to have as a head coach or as, as a father or a family figure or you know, whatever. And I think that had a great deal to do with it. Shock Mel is referring to Roger's name on the stadium, a fitting honor for a man who gave so much to others. While deserved, it became controversial because the property traditionally honored veterans exclusively. He was willing to have his name removed from the stadium be because it was controversial. He said, I don't want con controversy. I want a nice stadium. 
It's now Roger Herring Stadium at Veterans Memorial Field Sports Complex, honoring a person and people who've earned the recognition. During a recent trip, Shakmel listened to a radio interview about a poet. The program included a discussion about the poem Epitaph by Merritt Malloy. When he arrived home, he looked up the poem, and during our interview, he read part of it, a part reminding him of his friend. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. Let me live in your eyes, not in your mind. Love does not die people die. And all I could think of was Roger. Several players went on to pro careers after playing for Herring. We'll talk with two of them in particular when we come back. Welcome back to Roger Herring Football and Beyond. 36 players who played for Herring were either drafted or signed with a professional team. That's amazing. I caught up with two guys who had long and successful NFL careers who say they likely wouldn't have played college football at all if it wasn't for Herring. The first thing I thought of was how many other thousands of people are reacting the same way because he was such a great man, and he's impacted so many lives. It was just a sad day because he's, uh, you know, he's been such a big part of my life. Like many who knew Roger Herring, the news of his death hit hard for two of his more well-known players, Bill Schrader and Tom Newberry. Schrader and Newberry are another part of Herring's legacy, the long list of players who went on to play professionally. Going out for football, I think, um, changed my life. He meant a lot. I mean, he, he, was, a, he was a great coach. He was a great motivator. Um, you know, he even gave me advice when I'm going in the NFL. I talked to him quite a few times. Um, he, he always had a good feel for, for what I was about. Schrader and Newberry were originally track athletes at UWL and had to be convinced to come out for football. Therein lies the power of persuasion of Herring. Coach Herring was very adamant about getting me to come out and play football for many years. And uh, I always had some excuse to, to say no. And um, finally, he just asked me, he's like, look, you don't have any more eligibility in track. You can come out for football now. The bridge that he set forth in my career to become an NFL football player would never have happened had it not been for him. I just said, if you don't, you know, if you don't like it, you can walk away. It's D3. We don't, we don't have, you know, you don't have a scholarship and I can't make you play. And so I, I said, you know what, I'll, I'll come out and I'll come out and give it a shot and see if I like it. What happened next is history. Newberry played 10 years in the NFL, nine with the Rams, and was a two-time Pro Bowl selection. Schrader spent 10 total years in the league, including seven with the Packers. He finished with 304 career catches and 28 touchdowns. Who would have thought the careers of a couple of track guys at a Division III school would evolve into that? I think uh, our situation is that we've had both of those kids were late developers. Uh, kids like uh, Billy Schrader, of course, only really played a half a year of football. And Tom was his best sport was uh, basketball in high school. His second sport was track, and football again was his third sport. So we really see kids develop in our program. That's what it's been all about. It keeps to himself, but when he's on the football field and he puts that lacrosse hat on, it's all business. There's that iconic photo of you after the 1985 championship holding up the trophy and Coach Herring's right next to you looking up. How much does that ever pop into your mind? I mean, when you think of Coach Herring? Oh, every time I see that picture and I've got it, I've got a copy of it. Um, it's 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 a pretty cool picture. Probably you you couldn't pose a thousand times and get a better picture than that. The surface of the ground. So Coach would invite us over a couple times this season or off season, and at least two or three times a year. Mary would make lasagna and we would sit down have a regular family dinner and just talk and and we would not talk football at all. Um, you know, things like that, I'm sure most coaches probably didn't do. I, I can remember every coach I've ever had and he was one of the few guys that really impacted my life and it wasn't just on the football field, he was, he was teaching you to be a man. 
Newberry told me he was also proud of the matchups he had with another former UWL great, Joel Williams. Williams played 11 seasons in the NFL, most of them with Atlanta, and they used to play each other a couple of times a season. And having two guys from a Division III program play in the same NFL game, quite rare. Packers general manager Brian Gudekinst played for Herring and then was a student assistant coach back in the mid-90s. He shared this statement with News 19 about Herring. Quote, his accomplishments as a coach were remarkable, but the impact he had on the young men that played for him was rare. He found value in everyone and helped us become better fathers, husbands, and sons. The positive impact he had will continue through all of us that had the unbelievable fortune to be around him and his program. He will be missed, but not forgotten. Herring was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2005. Before the ceremony that year, I had a chance to sit down and talk with him and talk about a career that left an indelible mark. And we thought it appropriate to end this program with words from Coach Herring. Thank you for watching Roger Herring, Football and Beyond. Well, I think we're very humanist, humanistic in our approach. Uh, we're very much concerned about kids. And, uh, you know, academically, you know, get them in the right uh, program. And graduating kids at an 80% rate is, is kind of important to, for, work, for us working, sir. But also treat, treat them like men. You know, don't be uh, demeaning people or verbalizing and so forth. And uh, make them feel that uh, you're kind of a the, the father type and this is part of a family. Very special because I'm here. Obviously, I had bypass surgery. I had six bypasses at the time. And uh, before I went into surgery, the first thing I called was Roland Christensen. And Chris, uh, I said, "You're the head coach. Uh, take it from here." Well, not unless you're Craig Cusick. He wants to show off that big league arm. Oh, look at that! Jeremy Europe wide open. He could go all the way and dunk. Yeah. 95 national championship team, which had, was multi-talent with three kids that ended up playing in the NFL, that type of thing. They also had uh, four valedictorians on the team. They had uh, uh, two medical doctors, uh, three guys that ended up being uh, 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 attorneys of law. So it was a very talented team academically and certainly uh, athletically. The University of Wisconsin Lacrosse is the national champions of Division Three, And for Roger Herring, the head coach, a sweet, sweet moment indeed. I think that I like to be remembered as uh, being respected as you know, a guy who was concerned about young people and uh, enjoyed it, the job that he was, you know, uh, I guess uh, he had an opportunity to perform. Roger Herring, Football and Beyond. This News 19 special presentation was sponsored locally by City of La Crosse Parks, Recreation and Forestry Department, Bruce Donlan Estate Management and Services, and by Olson Solar Energy.